What would you say if I told you that the VLOOKUP function is the most widely used function on this planet? I mean, that's just my intuition. I don't really have the data to back it up, but I could not be far from right. In the spirit of my intuition and the legacy of the VLOOKUP function for all of these years, let me just share with you a few awesome tricks with VLOOKUP function. Well, no further ado, let's get started. Trick number one, how do you do a left VLOOKUP? I'm sure you know of VLOOKUP already, so I'm not gonna waste time in talking about VLOOKUP, but I'll share this trick with you. A lot of times you're going to get the data something like this. You have the client, you have the ticket number, ticket number also happens to be the unique column on which I have to write the VLOOKUP. Now let's just say that I have the ticket number defined and I have the client defined. Now I cannot really go inside the VLOOKUP function and ask it to search on the left. That means the column number cannot be like minus one here. So most times you're going to see people then copying the data, taking the ticket number column, moving it to the first position, doing all of that kind of work. But there's a better way out using the VLOOKUP function, I'm not gonna use the index match or whatever. Please take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and start to write the choose columns function. So that's a new function which is there in Excel, choose columns. And the first part of this function is that from what data do you wanna choose the columns? So this is a table that I have created. The name of this table is data. From this table, I wanna choose the second column. Then I wanna choose the first column. So column two, comma, column one, two, comma, one is what I will write close the bracket and I press enter. As soon as I do that, you're going to see that the second column, which is the ticket number comes at the first position and the client comes at the second position. Now, this gives you a range of the data and in this range of the data, you can very well write the VLOOKUP function. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the choose columns function in the VLOOKUP function and I'm gonna say, hey, VLOOKUP for this particular ticket number, go and do your VLOOKUP search in this particular data set, which is where the ticket number is the first column of the data. And please give me column number two and last part of VLOOKUP is false or zero and press enter. And that is your client name without shifting the positions of the column using XLOOKUP, index match or whatever that might be. Now the problem with this function at the moment is that this function is not robust enough that I can simply copy and paste the function on the right and it works spectacularly. No, it won't because at the moment the two and the one which is the number of the columns which is the second column right here and the first column right here are hard coded and i do not really want that so i'm going to use a function called match in case you don't know match i would recommend that you take a look at the video that i have done several 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 years ago please go take a look at that it's still relevant so i'm going to go ahead and start to write a match function to get the two with a formula so i'm going to say something like equals to match match what match this particular item which is nothing but the ticket i'm going to completely lock that match it in the data match it the headers of the data and please give me an exact match so close the bracket and press enter and the same match can be copied on this one as well can be replaced with the match function the only thing is that now i'm trying to match the name of the client and the cell reference is going to be i2 so i'm going to just change the h to an i and make sure that I only lock the row number here, not the column. Close the bracket, press enter, and I'm also going to make sure that I lock the edge here, which is the starting of that VLOOKUP. So lock the edge here, close the bracket, press enter, drag the formula down, no errors, drag the formula on the right, and it just works beautifully. That was VLOOKUP on the left without any shenanigans. Trick number two, how do you do a ridiculously fast VLOOKUP on large data? At the moment, I don't really have a large data. I have just like 800 rows of data, but consider that you have a million rows of data and you wanna write a VLOOKUP and you want that VLOOKUP to be blazing fast. How do you do that? So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna sort on the column on which I would like to write the VLOOKUP, which is going to be my ticket number column in the data set, and that's the column that I will sort it in the ascending order. The shortcut is Alt A S A to sort the column in the ascending order. You can also go right here and sort it in the ascending order. Once you have sorted the column in the ascending order, I'm gonna use the approximate VLOOKUP technique to be able to write a VLOOKUP. Let's just see how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to write my conventional VLOOKUP function. So VLOOKUP for this particular ticket number. Again, the name of this particular data set is data number two, I guess, that's the one. And then column number is going to be the very first column, which is column number one. I'm trying to get the ticket number itself, one. And the last part of VLOOKUP is going to be true. I will not mention that as false. Close the bracket and I press enter and I drag the formula down right here. 
Now you're going to see that we already had a ticket number and we got the ticket number once again. But let me just kind of build an anomaly in the data and try to build a case where the VLOOKUP value is not there. So I'm gonna write something like TD999 and press enter. You can see that it TD999 is not there in the data, obviously, but it still kind of gives me a value for that. Now, obviously this is an incorrect value because the VLOOKUP that we have used is the true VLOOKUP. Why have we used the true VLOOKUP? Because true VLOOKUP is ridiculously fast because it works on the sorted data set and not on the unsorted data. Now, I still wanna use the true VLOOKUP, which is fast, but I also wanna make it accurate because that's not the output that I wanna get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, write this VLOOKUP, and I'm gonna compare this VLOOKUP with the original value that I was trying to find. So I'm gonna say, if the answer of the VLOOKUP is equals to this ticket number that I wanna find, then I wanna do the correct VLOOKUP. So I will just press enter, drag the formula down, I get a bunch of trues and falses. That means this value was not the value which I received as an answer. Now, based on this true and false, I can write a correct VLOOKUP. So I'm gonna say, if this VLOOKUP gives you a true, that means the value is there in the data. In that case, I would like to do a VLOOKUP. So I'm just gonna go ahead right here, say equals to VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP for this value, VLOOKUP in the data two here, and column number is going to be, let's say client, which is the second column of the data. And the last part of VLOOKUP is true. Do not write false because false is slower true is blazing fast. So true again, close the bracket. Uh, otherwise, I wanna write not found. Close the bracket of the if, press enter and drag the formula down and that is where the value is not found. Now, if you do this type of VLOOKUP on a large data set, I promise this is going to be blazing fast as compared to your regular VLOOKUP which works on the unsorted data. The only few things that you have to remember is that you should use a true VLOOKUP instead of the false VLOOKUP and more importantly, please make sure that the column that you're trying to search it on should be sorted in the ascending order. All right, people, trick number three and also a slight change in the settings of the video. And this video cropped right towards the end and the last two tricks were far too interesting to chop off from the video. So I'm just maybe changing the day, changing my clothing and getting back to running the show with the last two tricks. I hope you enjoy them. So a lot of times what's gonna happen is that your data is going to contain duplicates. So let's just say that we have employee one duplicated right here, and I still want to be able to find the VLOOKUP of employee one and get all the records found for that. I wanna have as an answer, part BI, comma, digital life as an answer split right here. So we have employees and the training names is what I would like to find. now. Contrary to VLOOKUP, I'm going to use the IF function to be able to solve this problem. Take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write my IF function and I'm going to say, hey, I'm trying to look for this particular uh, value right here and I'm trying to look this value up in this training data. So the name of the table is training and the column is obviously code column and please see that where the value matches. And in case the value matches in this column, I would want to have the corresponding column returned. And that's the column that I'm going to select. In case the value doesn't match, I'm just gonna maybe return an empty string. Now let's just try to evaluate how this formula is going to work. So this particular cell, this value, which is E1, is going to be tested out in every single row of this data. So this is E1, yes, this is going to give me a true, this is going to give me a true, and rest everything is going to give me a false. As soon as the value gives you a true, I am going to get these two values as an output, and otherwise I'm just gonna get a blank as an output. So if I just maybe select this entire thing right here, and if I just maybe take a look at the um, the hover right here, you can see that we have Power BI and we have Digital Life and rest all the other values are absolutely blank. It is returning us multiple answers. The problem is that I cannot commit multiple answers into a single cell. So I need to concatenate these values to bring it all together. I can do that with a text join function and I just lost my if, so I'm just gonna write that quickly once again. All right, so I'm just gonna surround this if function in a text join function. So I'm just gonna say that, hey, I have multiple texts that I'd like to join and the delimiter to join those multiple texts is a comma and a space. In case any text is empty, I would like to return that as a blank or do not join that, true for that. And the if function returns me all the texts that I wanna join. Uh, the if function is for that. And I'm just gonna close the bracket at the end and press enter. This is going to give me not one, but two answers, which is a duplicated answer for our VLOOKUP. Not really a VLOOKUP, but another way of solving the same problem. I'm gonna drag this formula down and we are 
absolutely good to go. Another very interesting VLOOKUP trick is to find the last record in the data set. It's very interesting. Take a look. Here, we can see that we have multiple employees and these employees have undergone trainings. Maybe I would like to know that which employee has done the last training. So employee one has done two trainings, Power BI and Digital Life, and that's the record that I would want to find. For employee number two, I want to find the last record, which is email, so on and so forth. So how do you get to the last record? The solution is very, very simple. It is VLOOKUP, but VLOOKUP is used slightly differently. So take a look. I'm going to go ahead and start to write equals to VLOOKUP. My conventional VLOOKUP, nothing changes. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the value right here. Hey, look up in this particular training data. Obviously, the column that I would want to have is the second column. And the last part of this VLOOKUP is going to be true. That I'm not trying to do an exact search, but I'm trying to do an approximated search. The other additional change that I will make in this formula is that I'm not trying to look for E1 as it is, but I'm trying to look for E1 and a concatenated string after that. You'll see that. I'm going to go ahead and make a slight change in the formula. And I'm going to say that I'm concatenating a large number after that. The large number is going to force the E1 to actually go to the last value of E1 that is found. So you can have any large number concatenated, but that actually pushes it to the last record found. That's it. Close the bracket, press enter, and what you're going to get is the last record found. Now, there is a caveat into this. Because we are doing this uh, approximate VLOOKUP, which is a one or true towards the end, and we are concatenating this large number, this creates an assumption, an underlying assumption, that your first column of the data or wherever you're performing the search needs to be sorted in the ascending order. That means if this column was not sorted in the ascending order, our VLOOKUP answer wouldn't have been right. So make sure to kind of take care of these nuances of the formula and this is going to work just as well. All right, that's been it. Let me know if you have any questions on this one. Please put down your questions in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. Also, I'd like to hear about your comments. Which tricks did you not know of and which tricks were incredibly useful in your kind of work? In the end, a uh, shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're interested to learn DAX, Power Query in a structured way, build up your skills. Please feel free to check out my courses. Those are also going to be extremely beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye now.